Hey everybody, James Yeager with Response. Thanks for watching. Um, well, uh, got something new to do today. Uh, we're gonna try to make this like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Like, hmm, what could it be? You know, maybe I come in and change clothes, but let's see what's in the old Liberty safe, the, the Lincoln 50. Let's see what's in there. Ugh, this thing, like the door's like, like legit heavy. Like, open this thing up here. What? No. Oh, oh. What is this? A Barrett Rec 7 DI direct impingement. Pretty neat, huh? Let's see what else. There's all kinds of stuff in there. We'll just talk about this one for right now. Let's see here. So, the Rec 7 DI. You guys will remember if you've been watching for a while, or maybe you know that. Uh, that uh, Chris and Ronnie Barrett and Angela Barrett are all alumni of Tactical Response. And um, it was, uh, I was walking through SHOT Show one year, and this was 10 years ago or more. Yeah, more. Uh, and uh, I go by the Barrett booth, and I stopped by the Barrett booth to thank Ronnie Barrett. Um, basically, California had imposed their 50 cal um, uh, rifle ban and Ronnie made a public statement, uh, sent California a letter saying, okay, we will no longer sell or service any Barrett firearms that are owned by the government in California. Um, paraphrasing, he is far more eloquent than I am. And I just stopped by to say, good job. And um, he wasn't around the booth or, or, or he was quite busy. And uh, so I kind of peeked around and uh, uh, you know, and just then continued walking and a minute later, I heard James Yeager and I turned around, he said, hey, Chris Barrett, hey, I, hey, Chris, what's going on? I said, hey, man, I wanted to meet you and stuff. And, and so that right there told me, and should tell you that maybe they're a little bit different than most gun companies. Because as I've told you before, most gun companies, they're, they're not employed by shooters. They're, uh, uh, they don't, they don't, like, they're not run by shooters, like the big, com the big ones you think of. Like, you don't bump into them at classes and stuff like that. Ronnie Barrett, Chris Barrett stayed in the team room. And it's like gun culture. Like, these people live it. And um, that's a that's an aspect of Barrett Firearms that you don't know. Like, you don't really know who those guys are. Maybe I should introduce you guys to them. Maybe, uh, <laughs> would you guys like to do, like, a How It's Made with a Rick 7 di or something? Like, maybe I'll see if, I, if it's okay with Chris, if it's even possible to go to the factory and kind of like see how these things are made would that be something interesting let me know like so you like say yeah we want to see how it's made or something like that uh, or maybe uh uh maybe uh maybe maybe i can interview chris and the, and the crew down there and uh and let you see who they are because they're really neat they're really neat folks but as you guys may remember um i um assisted with uh we we <laughs> assisted with the prototype testing of the original barrett um uh, rec 7 you know the original piston gun and uh, and we broke one little spring, you know, and oh, way you know tens of thousands of rounds. I mean, I think we did fifteen thousand rounds in thirty days because I would just keep going to a class. You can imagine now at this time Barrett had never made an AR-15, so keep that in mind. So I show up to a rifle class, you know, and I go, Hey, does anybody want to shoot a, a Barrett? You know, and they go, A Barrett? You know, fifty? I'm no. Air 15 they'd be like what and yes and so i came to this guy handed this guy like they were doing like leapfrog drills you guys have had fighting rifle you could imagine the rifle would come back and somebody else say i want to shoot that barrett you know just to have the because a bunch of guys have the bragging rights of saying i helped prototype a barrett rifle and so we got a bunch of rounds real fast it broke one little bitty spring it was just a defect in the spring um on it and uh and, and, it, was, and it was funny and 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 for you guys don't know if, you go over 10,000 rounds without breaking a bolt or even an extractor or an extractor spring going bad. That's pretty, that's, that's great. Um, but anyway, so um, now they're up to the Gen 2 on the Rec 7 piston gun. This is the um, direct impingement of the gas version. Now, quite a bit of discussion uh, with folks about what's better. And when the piston guns came out, they were saying they're more reliable, just like because it had a piston, like I, I, I don't agree with that. Uh, I, now the, the sentiment being that um, less, you know, less soot getting in, in the carbon and you know getting in the, in the chamber, and I, I get that stuff. But just in general, 
I have not found that piston guns are more reliable. It's, it, and if they're more reliable, it's not by such a marked difference that uh, that it's it's even really noticeable. I mean, case in point, like you see all the guns that I shoot, I carry, I use. Uh, there are some piston guns in that mix, but like by and large, they're gas guns. And so I don't I don't consider a piston gun an upgrade. Um, but uh, having said all that, the, the, the Barrett piston guns work. Now, if you guys remember back a decade ago or, or however long it was when when piston guns first started, there was quite a bit of problems with them. There, there are still quite a bit of problems with them, but Barrett seemed to get it right the first time, and uh, it's, it's amazing. Um, so the, the gas gun, this is the first one I've touched, and uh, Chris <laughs> was nice enough to try to match the color of my Harley. Uh, I believe he calls this tungsten but I, I call it Harley uh, the um, color of my motorcycle is Harley's charcoal denim and this is really close to it I, I put some pictures on my Instagram and Facebook uh, of the the gun laying on the on the, uh, the, the yeah the gun laying on the motorcycle and it was a uh, pretty uh, pretty cool but uh, so um, what I want to do is uh, outfit this rifle and so you know my question to you is you know, what would, what, how would you outfit this rifle? Well, I'll tell you how I would outfit this rifle. Bam! Something like this. <laughs> so, let's see what we got here. Aim point magnifier. Very nice. Aim point T1 micro. Midwest Industries uh, mount for the, the micro. Uh, Midwest Industries flip up sights. Um, the uh, XS front stripe. Uh, tritium like if you think I like big dots on pistols man that excess the front stripe um, for the rifles tritium love it uh, SOE sling Midwest Industries QDs uh, Magpul MO, MO stock and grip came on the gun from the factory uh, surefire scout light love my surefire as you know I do and um, all that's left is uh, a little danger, a little fioki. And, uh, and here, here is what I think an uh, uh, interesting video would be, is uh, get fioki to send down, uh, like I said, a case of ammo. And I'll split it evenly in half, like, like 500 and 500, and get a, a piston gun and do 500 rounds and try to make it interesting, you know, 500 rounds, but not just shoot it, like do some drills or something. Anyway, 500 rounds of both. And number one, like, let's just see how clean the Fiocchi ammo is, period, in 500 rounds. And I don't mean anything special. I mean like ball ammo. And then, um, uh, and then, uh, uh, and then compare the Fiocchi ammo to the, the uh, piston versus the gas gun. So, man, hell, we might need three guns. <laughs> but, uh, uh, or, you know, or maybe do it again with another ammo. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I think that'd be a cool day. What do you guys think? Gas, gas versus uh, direct impingement. I'm mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> direct impingement versus piston uh, for cleanliness and all that stuff. I, I don't know. And uh, so we'll get the other thing going. So this, uh, I'll list the, I'll put a link to this rifle underneath for, for all the specs and stuff. But, uh, um like every Barrett I've ever touched, uh, when you when you when you touch it, it's quality. And for me, you know, made in America is awesome. Made in Tennessee is even awesomer. And uh, and you know, this just this gun's made down the road from me, and it's uh, it's fantastic. It's I mean, makes me, I'm a proud American, I'm a very proud Tennessean, and uh, and I'm proud of the Barretts, um, Ronnie for for the, his idea, his motivation. For, for Chris for continuing to carry that torch uh, for Angela for just being so hot. No, I'm just kidding. Angela's awesome. <laughs> she, she's more than just a pretty face. I'm not trying to be mean. It's, what, what a wonderful family. And then um, what, what a wonderful family. And uh, so this is it. And uh, we're going to go out and shoot this thing, get it zeroed, and do some drills. And uh, what would you like to see me do with these this, this Barrett uh, gas gun? And uh, certainly now that I've got a gun that matches my motorcycle it is imperative that i get some kind of scabbard to put this on my motorcycle it's just it's a, it's a rule it should it, it's it has to happen it has to happen so what do you want to see from barrett how it's made you want to get to know the barretts 
Do you want to see a comparative test between a gas gun and a piston gun? Tell me. Tell me what it, what it is. I, I, I would love to know. James Jacob for Tap Response reminding you that your responsibility to be ready for the fight ah, never ends.